Hello, I'm Ezekiel Gasho, and today I'm going to draw this toucan. So this will be very similar to my other videos if you've been following along. Um, we'll go ahead and identify the sort of top point, which would be like the top of the bill here. And... Uh, you could make a mark or you could just kind of um, just visualize it and have some kind of idea of where your page is and where the top of the drawing is. Um, the left right is also important to get a feel for too because the um, his bill is so long that you don't want to you know obviously you don't want to run out of run out of space. So um, just kind of keeping that in mind, uh, we'll get started. And I always like to start with the eyes. It's a nice place to, with animals anyway, it's a great place to get a sense of the size and frame. Uh, scope of what you're going to draw. He's got a little bit of shine in his upper right eye, and I'm going to leave that completely white for now. Um, you could draw like a block around it almost just to kind of mark it off so that you know not to cover it. Um, that, you know, giving, giving that eye a little bit of shine will really help it look real and um, there are a lot of times when, when people look at pictures of living creatures, if you know, it's very true in life drawing as well of humans, it, but, uh, to just take a quick look and if the eyes look alive and real, you know, the rest of the illusion kind of works. And if it, they don't, it kind of breaks the spell a little bit. And so... I'll leave a little bit of light in the eyes there so that they look wet and shiny a little bit. So he's got this eye, and then it's this sort of funky, almost fur texture right here. And this is very similar to drawing a teacup or anything else. It, you know, it looks different. Um, but it's really a matter of just moving along your drawing, keeping everything referenced to everything else. And whenever you have any questions about where something goes, just triangulating the points and the angles. So like if I want to know where this sort of right angle of this black area, or this black um, striation or is, then, you know, I can, there are a couple ways I can do it. I could measure with a tool. I could... Um, you know, compare, I guess I could try to find the length of this line and, and then see, you know, how far it goes down from the eye. But the way I'm looking at it is I'm sort of making this imaginary triangle here. And so what I'm looking at is this angle here between this, like this angle here between the corner of the eye and the corner of the eye. And I want that angle to look right. And then that'll help me know you know, where, where that right angle kind of starts. So we'll uh, get started with the upper part of the bill. And uh, there are a couple different ways that we could do this To This is sort of, you know, for the beginners, this is kind of like maybe a tricky part because um, it involves this long, smooth curve, and it's kind of off in outer space a little bit, so to speak. Like, there's not a lot of stuff to reference it against. Um, and one of the ways to kind of deal with that is, you know, definitely... Um, you could measure with, you know, some kind of like a ruler, protractor, whatever. Um, 
you could also break it down into smaller pieces. Um, you could... Sort of what, um, what I'm doing is I'm just like gently roughing it in and it's so smooth that like if corrections need to be made later, you can do that. And um, I don't think there's any right or wrong way as long as it's giving you the look that you are after so my my bill might be a little slender here so I might need to raise up the angle of this arc here but uh, yeah so like basically just kind of blocking it in and kind of sculpting it into the right shape and not not trying to worry about you know immediately drawing the perfect line on the first hit i mean it's not it's not spray paint so you don't need to do that um you know it's not like you're working in like a micron pen or something where if you mess up it's the permanent mark there Um, so we've got this bill going on and we'll kind of just, I'm just going to leave that there for a minute and come back to it soon and we'll get the rest of his body roughed in. I keep saying him. I think it's a him because of the bright colors, but I may be wrong. So. So now it's really like back to the concept of like drawing a teacup or anything else where you're just looking at the shapes that you see and the dark shapes and the light shapes and kind of defining the light shapes by using the dark shapes next to them. And the toucan's nice for that. You've got this nice black feather area on the back and wings and, uh, a lighter a lighter color here so he's kind of got this this shadow area here and you know you could definitely break this part into smaller geometric components to kind of get a feel for how those go that it'll look good when you sketch over them later anyway so um, so like for this part I kind of drew like this you know tooth almost tooth shape um, like molar shape and in this part I kind of drew a just a curve under it and that kind of does it for that section this section here could also just be like a I don't know what you'd want to call it like almost like a like a gumdrop shape or something and then it gets into this red pattern and simple arc there and a little bit of wing there and a little bit is now it's fun because we get to kind of draw so fast and then go in and shade and get to the good part so um, like blocking stuff in is always you know building stuff is always fun and everything but the the shading and the detail for me is like refining it is building's kind of like you mine the ore you know and then as you add detail and stuff you refine it into something precious to keep extending the metaphor and so let's uh, definitely add this branch that he's perched on kind of lightly sketching in just blocking in those uh, 
Do they have talons? I don't know. Um, feet. These are not birds of prey, so they might not be technically talons. Maybe they are the way they eat insects. I really I'm no expert on toucans. <laughs> I just think this picture looks good, and I think that'll be a really good demonstration, especially for people who are just starting budding artists who are just starting in life drawing, which we all were at some point, and to some degree we all always will be, <laughs> to get a little deep there. Um, so let's see. Okay, so I got the, the width of this branch blocked in to my liking. And now I'm going to go ahead and finish the toucan. So you can see a little bit of leg there. Uh, I put mine a little too far to the right, but I think it'll look all right. Um, nature can be very forgiving sometimes. And sometimes it can be cruel and exacting which we'll get to when we look at noses and eyes and parts of the human face that if you mess them up, everyone will look at your picture and go, oh gosh, that's just wrong. <laughs> but for now, we'll just keep, uh, keep on keeping on with our toucan and keep our sort of drawing going in the right direction here. Okay, um, in this lovely red tail feather area here, and just blocking it in for now, not really worried about the shadow or the detail too much, just kind of highlighting it. And it occurs to me I'm about to run off of my border. Um, let's see, maybe we can just zoom out a little bit and fix that. Zoom out a little bit, fix that. And I don't even think I'll edit that out. I might edit that out, but if I don't, I'm gonna go get a look, a look behind the magic curtain. <laughs> um, I tend not to wanna edit my videos because I, I really, personally, I think it's very helpful to see um, to see the process from start to finish. And one of the things I ran into when I was looking at YouTube videos of drawing was I'd find these great videos that I loved, that I thought were very informative and helpful. And um, that, I, that I really did love that. I, you know, I'd play them over and over sometimes and, you know, I'd learn a lot from the artists who created them but I kept on running into these situations where there was either one or two things they would go into a time lapse or they would go into a like an edit sort of edit mode where they say okay here's what I'm going to do now and for the sake of time I'm going to edit it out and you, you know they'd come back and they'd say okay I've been doing that for an hour and now it looks like this. And it just, it's like not the most helpful thing in the world. It's like, uh, for me personally, I just wanted to, you know, kind of keep it more accessible, especially for newer people who are, you know, maybe just learning. It's not easy to make those jumps all of the time. And some, like if you have a question at a certain point, it's not like you can just, you know, imagine the answer to it or easily contact the artist and get an answer to, hey, what were you doing in minute 45 of that edit that you did uh, on that one picture that you made like three years ago? <laughs> 
Um, so, I mean, this is really, you know, for, for people who have drawn a lot, this stuff here might be kind of redundant and they, you know, this might not be for the expert, um, but it might be, I mean, you might, you might still find value in it, but for people who are starting or, you know, have done some drawing, maybe not a ton, you know, hopefully this is just the, you know, you can hopefully, you can just turn the sound off and you don't really even need to listen to me yammer on about what I like about unedited videos. You can just watch what I'm doing, put on some music or whatever, and um, and you know work alongside and when you're done have a nice drawing that you are proud of and you know can you know have that sense of accomplishment that you feel good that you've done drawn something great that's one of the things I really like about drawing is when you see somebody who thought oh I can't draw I can only draw stick figures or whatever and then they start trying it and then they realize whoa I can actually do this you know it's kind of a learned skill it's not like a magical thing it's like when we're kids we have to learn how to talk and for drawing it's just the same it's just you'll learn how to see and how to triangulate things and you know a lot of a lot of people were told at some point when they were maybe in elementary school or middle school or high school or something like yeah you know give it up you don't really have the gift <laughs> or whatever I, I don't know I never took art classes in the at those levels um but uh, I just feel like, you know, if you, that's, it's all kind of baloney, anyone can draw, and it's just, if you're having issues, it's just a matter of, you know, learning how to see the angles, and a lot of that is just having have someone show you, or finding a resource or something where you can understand what's going on um but a lot of people it's just nobody ever showed them how to you know with the angles or how to hold their pencil or um these little things that that really can turn somebody from a drawing stick figures to drawing beautiful drawings from life and so we got these lighter yellower parts here I'm gonna leave those pretty light you know, just a little bit of tone there. And, you know, you may notice I'm not going for photorealism here. I'm just enjoying filling in some of the tones. And, um, and that's one of the other things I like about drawing, too, is, it, you know, it doesn't have to look like a photograph all the time. Sometimes it's fun to get into the f extremely realistic looking stuff and you know put hours and hours into picture i do that you know frequently um you know and layer it up and go slow and but sometimes it's fun to just you know these skills here these exercises with the you know those really help practice for those times when you're gonna start a bigger picture and uh, I still haven't quite figured out how I want to approach that in terms of videography and you know if 
I'm going to maybe do it in, in portions and maybe like say we'll take on a figure drawing and we'll draw like a woman or a man, a male or female nude and, you know, that could be a project that goes for well, well over eight hours. And so, you know, it kind of, it's something I'm still working on, uh, the logistics of, I suppose you'd say logistical challenges, but those are for me to figure out. And for, and for the, in the meantime, if you're listening, thank you. Um, we'll keep on keeping on with, uh, I'm going to go through more animals and then we'll start, I guess, doing quicker sketches of, of people, but for a, for a little while at least, I wanted to focus on on animals and for for a couple of different reasons. I I there are a lot of animals that I've never drawn, and it occurred to me the other day, you know life is short and I want to draw as many different things as I can from the, from the world around me. And, uh, you do learn a lot about things by drawing them, even if it's just uh, subconsciously or whatever. Um, so there's that. There's also, I, I, I feel like they're good starters points for, um, for the new people. Um, they, they're they're catchy and it's a lot of time it's easy to get a result you know you can be proud of without having to um, sort of strain yourself with some of the the more challenging uh, aspects of drawing like accurate you know properly shading the nose and eyes and things like that that can be a little more challenging if you're just approaching those cold without having built up your skills along the way so let's see this guy's he was a little black there, a little bit there. And let's work on the beak a little bit here. The video's starting to run long and I don't want it to take forever. orange and red and in, in the black and white would get a little darker than the green so I'm gonna go ahead and give those a little more darkness and still pressing very lightly and with this basically just cross hatching going the one way here and then The other way perpendicular and then finding like the way between those two and then finally the fourth way to kind of give it the darkness from the deep red areas there. There's this little bit of light blue. And there's a little bit of shininess to it too. So now I'll go ahead and of the green part of the bill, the coat of color it needs, a coat of 
gray. orange up to so it's not lost in the rest of the fill and there are these sort of these pleats and those you can add in pretty easily I'm just doing this sort of triangular almost shark tube shape I'm not going to count them out or um, get extremely laser precise with these I'm just gonna kind of notice that you know the top ones match the bottom ones for the most part It's pretty sharp and it curves down. And this dark red under here is quite dark. Okay, so let's come back to his eye for a second. It's pretty dark, and it's got some shine. And now that we've done the rest of the picture, we can get some of those fine details in there. Just paying close, close attention to where the shine in the eye is so that, so that I don't accidentally cover it. That's, Ideally, going to be my only place where there's any actual white in the whole picture. Which should help it really stand out. And I'm noticing too that the eye is, you know, a little oblong. It's not, you know, maybe the actual eyeball is perfectly round, but the way that it's angled and the way that it's covered by some of the birds eyebrow and eyelid and stuff makes it so that it doesn't look perfectly round so it's not just a circle there and under this part is darker than that oh Okay, a few finishing touches, and I think we're all done with this uh, toucan. And you could go in and kind of give it the, in certain places, there are like little bits of feather and stuff that you could kind of accentuate to kind of add some final details and stuff just kind of get the sense of the uh, direction of the these feathers are almost like fur that at least in, in this part of the bird and uh, Parts of these here too are pretty black. Like this part too. And one of the nice things about the toucan is how the how black the feathers are and how beautifully they contrast with the other colors in the in the bird. Um, I don't want to go uh, pressing too hard or anything, but there are places where it looks nice to get 
the dark blacks in there. go through and sort of get a sense of the shading on the object too. So yeah, uh, looking at the toucan here, got a leaf here, you know, you could, you could add any number of details to the to the piece and they would all probably help it you could extend the branch a little more and A little bit of sunlight just, just chilling by some backlighting here it's very similar to the drawing of the um, cylinder that we did early on in my channel and maybe another little bit of leaf there kind of out of focus and not really worried about it too much just kind of having fun with it section here could be a little bit darker there's some wraparound light but there's also some silhouette shadowing so it's pretty complex if you get in there and look at it the the tones within the the blacks but as well get this little claw here and give another another pass of shading to the well, I want these black areas to look a little darker but as a function of the paper I'm using and the drawing board I'm on it's only so dark it'll let you get unless you really start pressing in super hard
Okay, so thanks for watching, and this has been a toucan by Ezekiel Dasho. And uh, nothing left to do now but sign it and say. Adieu.